Holy catfish! It's the aquaponics lady! Radio, how to build a solid separator. You remember from the other videos that a solid separator is the first step in the filtration process? So it's what we call the mechanical filtration, where we're removing all the solid waste from your aquaponics system. Now, this is a 50 litre drum. You can do the exact same thing with a 20 litre pail. Do the exact same thing with a 200 litre drum. Okay? It's the same process. You're just needing to vary the size of your pipe and the size of your drum, for a better word, to your aquaponics system itself. Okay, so what we've got here, I've actually got part that's already been drilled, but I'm going to go through and show you. What we're needing to have is we're needing to have somewhere where the water is going to come in. So this is from the fish tank into your drum. And then I'm already got the hole here but a hole here that's going to take the water out again so to make the holes all I used was my drill and the right type of hole saw and I have used uni seals the advantage of uni seals is that when you get the hole right and it usually will tell you what size that you need to drill for the hole either when you buy it or on the on it it will often help you tell you what size you need to do you should be able to push it in and then push the pipe in and it holds it all in place so you don't need to be siliconing it you don't need to be doing anything else unfortunately i did do a slightly bigger hole so it's not pushing in well, it's pushing in too easy and it's moving about this is what you don't do with uni seals and this is why it's a really good idea to be able to practice with what you're doing first rather than jumping straight in but as this was my practice drum to be able to show you what I'm doing, that's perfectly okay. So, having marked out where you want things to go, so we're wanting to have, this is the outlet, so the water's going to come out of this hole, and there will be plumbing inside. It's going to take that into your grow bed or into your sump or wherever you want it to go. And as I said, this one goes into the fish tank. Now this one, just to point out while I've got it here, it's fixed in there well, it ain't going nowhere. In fact, it was an absolute bitch to get it in. And that's how it should be. It actually needs to be super duper tight because we don't want leaks. We don't want anything happening. And that's the advantage of a uni seal because you can, with enough effort, and I've got a bung shoulder so I can't today, but with enough effort you can pull the pipe out, pull the uni seal out, and reuse everything, which is awesome, rather than having this use silicon or whatever you're gonna use. It's also a lot cheaper to use a uni seal than all the other piping. But you can, and I don't have an example of it, you can easily cut your uni seal with your pipe or with your saw and have holes there, which we don't want. So there is always that problem, and they can break after a period of time if you're not careful and you don't look after them. It's the same with my car. My car will break down if I don't look after it, okay? So with the hole saw, having marked out this is the height that I want the pipe to come out of. So coming out of the grow bed, I literally just drilled the hole going through with my nice little hole saw. Whoopsie, I obviously had that tight enough, didn't I? <laughs> okay, so what do we do with the uni seal? Uni seals are really easy. That should be tighter than what it is, but it'll work for the moment. And you then you need to move it around. I've got a little bit of petroleum jelly on it. But that's how easy it is to actually install a uni seal. That hole is a little bit too big. I should not be able to move that. See how that's moving up and down? This is the perfect one. This was the perfect hole. Practice. Practice makes perfect. Okay? So if you've imagined for the moment, you've got water coming in from your fish tank. So this could be from your solids out, solid lift outlet. You know, so out of the fish tank goes down and up into here. However you, however you do your loops. And yeah, we can see nicely. What we want here is we're wanting to put a little, this is a 90 degree bend. And we want to pop that in. We pop this in and we want it facing down. Now, 
This pipe is actually in too deep for this. This should be here. And the reason why, I'm going to hold it out from this angle. We're wanting this also to be at a 90, sorry, at a 45 degree angle. I'm using 32 mil pipe, by the way. You will need to vary what you're doing. But if this pipe was here and not that extra bit, and we're having the 90 degree bend fitting attached onto that, and it's pointing slightly down, not straight down, slightly down. That's why I say, you know, turn it at a 45 degree angle. What's going to happen is the solid waste is going to swirl around and slowly sink to the bottom, whereas the cleaner water without the solid waste will actually float up top. So the solid waste will sink down. If you push and have that going straight down, that's going to churn everything up. So we don't want to be churning everything up. All that solid waste down here, we don't want it churning up. Having this bend on an angle, if you have it turning up with a solid separator, it's not going to work as well either. For a solid separator, it won't work. Okay, so if you have this going upwards, what will happen? We'll put the rest of the plumbing on to show you. Again, we've got a 90 degree bend. And a piece of piping here. So I'm going to move that around to show you. And I'm going to push that pipe in a little bit. Now, what I'm wanting to show you here, and you can see it, is we've got the pipe coming in, so that's where the water's going out into your grow bed, right? And you've got the 90 degree bend here, and a little bit of pipe up top. This means, and it's a tad too high, but your, this will be your actual water level, and all of the water without any solid waste will flow into here nice and neatly. It's a tad high, but again, this is an example, not perfection. Hot and humid today. So, if we have this 90 degree bend and we have it turning upwards, it's going to be pushing all of that solid waste upwards, right? And all that's going to end up going straight into this pipe, this one here. And we don't want that for a solid separator. If you have it straight on that 90 degree angle, look, it's not bad, but it's not going to work quite as good as if you have it angled down slightly. Now, I've been doing solid separators since 2007 and I've, I do prefer the solid separator to a radial flow filter. And I'll show you the difference between the plumbing and the two as well. But that's as simple as it, as it is. As I said, this is a tiny bit high. I would take off a centimetre and this is where you come comes back to working out the balance of and the height of where you're wanting your water to be in your fish tank, in your grow bed and in your sump and everything like that. We need to make sure that we're working out our heights for here. Because what will happen is if you don't get the balance right and this pipe up top, if it's too high, then the water and your, but your fish tank, just say your fish tank is down here, right? So the, the highest water mark of your fish tank is here, but this pipe is up too high, so up here, just hypothetically, well, water's not going to be able to get into this pipe, is it? This, the balance is way off. So you're needing to have your fish tank and your pipe at the maximum water level. Okay, so if we have the fish tank level, just say hypothetically it's here, remembering this will also be down lower on the ground, and you have this outlet pipe at this level, We've got a perfect level there now, don't we? So that's going to allow water to flow through. What you do want, you don't want this to be perfectly level though. What you're wanting is for this pipe here to be slightly lower than the fish tank water level, not the height of the fish tank, the fish tank water level. And that will then allow you to have the smooth, constant flow of water in from the fish tank, all the solid waste coming in here. The solid waste coming down and without that pressure, and this would be good if this was two 45 degree angles rather than a 90 degree. 90 degree still works though. The solid waste turns around, sinks to the bottom. The cleaner water comes out, up here, out into this pipe. And we can build this whole 
solid separator with a drill with a bearing tool or a knife to get rid of the sharp edges with a couple of uni seals and the correct piping. That's easy, that's pretty damn cool. I think that's awesome. And here's one of the things that people go, okay, so what do we do with the solid waste at the bottom? You need to remove any of the solid waste that builds up here. If you leave it in there, it will start to gas off, it will start to become anaerobic, so no oxygen in it, it will get smelly and it will start affecting your water quality. So you need to get that solid waste out. Now a lot of people have a valve on the bottom of their solid separator or radial flow filter or whatever it is, they have a valve that they turn on and off to, to drag out, to drain out all that solid waste. Now my, <laughs> my big system, I actually don't have a, have a valve down the bottom because I keep picking it. So as I know that I do that, I don't have the valve there and I manually remove it with a, um, an aquarium vacuum. I actually kind of like doing it. It makes me feel much better. It helps me just think about I'm removing this shit and it helps that whole mental process of I can let stuff go. That's a me thing. So you don't want this to fill up with solid waste. You do want to be vacuuming or draining it out every, every week or so. But if you don't, you're going to get really bad water quality. Okay. First step of the filtration, and this is a solid separator. Remember, 290 to 245 degrees would be better, and having it at a 45 degree angle would be perfect. How good is that, hey? Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you've got any questions or comments, make sure you do leave them below. And hit that subscribe button so you can find out when I've got more videos being posted. And don't forget to follow me on other social media because I do different lives on different social media on different days. So, again, thank you for watching. I really value and appreciate your time and I hope you enjoyed it.